represent some of the clinical research which is underway at the Academic Cardiology Department at the University of Hull. So in this presentation I'm going to talk uh, about only one form of amyloidosis, uh, about cardiac amyloidosis, and to be more specific only about one subform of cardiac amyloidosis, uh, cardiac senile amyloidosis. And I'm also going to talk about heart failure, because heart failure is you know, what I do most of my time. Uh, I'm not a scientist like many of you in this room, I'm a physician, and I'm actually a heart failure physician. So I see patients with heart failure, quite, quite a lot of them. Uh, and just a few facts about heart failure. Uh, it affects between 1 and 2 percent of the population in this country. And if you extrapolate it to the entire population of, of the world, uh, we, we, we think that probably about 50 million people uh, out there have a heart failure. And uh, bad news about heart failure that its incidence and prevalence is growing. Uh, why is it growing? Partly it's probably because of the improved uh, life longevity of general population. And it's also due to improved secondary prevention. Uh, uh, due to recent progress in medicine, we now can treat some of cardiac conditions better. For example, we treat uh, myocardial infarctions better. So our patients who experience myocardial infarctions, they survive and they live longer than they used to do like 20 or 25 years ago. But what happens, they end up eventually with heart failure and the same with other cardiac conditions. Uh, the other piece of good, uh, sorry, bad news is that prognosis in heart failure is very poor. Uh, it's actually worse than in some cancers. So when I see a patient in my clinic for the first time, I know that unfortunately 40% uh, of them may be dead within one year of seeing me and 75% may be dead within five years of seeing me. So it's, it's not good news. And also prognosis of heart failure is not actually proven as much as we would like to. Uh, just a quick word about the causes of heart failure. Obviously, ischemic heart disease, coronary arteries disease is number one cause of heart failure in the developed world. Uh, also, there are other important causes such as hypertension, uh, valvular disease, congenital disease, and amyloidosis is also on this list. But um, uh, we'll come to amyloidosis later, but currently it's considered that it's one of uh, rare causes of heart failure. Uh, I have to apologize, I have a problem with this slide. Uh, I, I just couldn't make these MRI images move for some reason, so they are like still pictures, so I'll have to describe uh, them verbally. So we have two main types of heart failure. It's systolic heart failure and diastolic heart failure. So on the left we have an example of a heart of the heart of a patient with systolic heart failure. So uh, what, what we can say here, this is the left ventricle, the main pumping chamber of the heart, and it's significantly enlarged in size, the myocardium is quite thin, and if this image moved, we would see that the, the, the contractile function of the ventricle is quite poor. Uh, so in a way, uh, it's bad news because the, the left ventricle is not uh, contracting well, but it's also partly good news because we know how to treat it. Uh, on the right we have uh, the heart of a patient with so-called diastolic heart failure, so that's his left ventricle. And, and it's much smaller, it's, it's, it's not a large size in size at all, it has a, a normal a small size and it's not thin at all if you look at the myocardium, it's actually a little bit thickened and again if this image played you would be able to see that the, the, the contractile function of this ventricle is entirely normal. Uh, so what's wrong with this uh, patient, why he has signs and symptoms of heart failure? But if you look at the other chambers of the, of the heart, for example the left atrium here, just Comparing it with the image on the left, you can uh, see that the left atrium is quite enlarged in size, unlike the left ventricle. And again, if this image played, you would be able to see that it's not moving very well, not contracting very well. So, diastolic heart failure uh, has the prevalence of 30 to 70 percent. So, 30, we don't know exactly because it's not so easy to diagnose. Uh, between 30 and 70 percent of our heart, fail heart failure patients. Uh, have diastolic heart failure or are labeled uh, as having diastolic heart failure and these are mostly elderly patients. Uh, the, the diagnostic criteria are a little bit vague so the diagnosis is often made by exclusion which means like in, in the previous example if we have a patient with signs and symptoms of heart failure but the left ventricle 
pumps well, then this patient sort of more or less automatically gets labeled as a patient with diastolic heart failure. So what about prognosis? Again, we're not quite entirely sure. Some research suggests that prognosis in diastolic heart failure is better. Uh, some other studies contradict and suggest that prognosis is equally poor in systolic and diastolic heart failure. And uh, because of a lot of unclear questions, particularly with the diagnosis of heart, uh, diastolic heart failure, I must say that quite a few experts actually question the existence of diastolic heart failure. So what about the mechanism? So how can we explain that this patient with normal contractile function of the left ventricle develop heart failure? So what we know that it's clearly related to aging. So it's typical of these are all the patients that develop diastolic heart failure. So some even think that maybe cardiac aging and diastolic heart failure is the same thing. Uh, so how, how it's explained, it's explained by various things such as increased stiffness of the left ventricle probably due to age-related fibrosis and due to increased arterial stiffness, obviously hypertrophy and ischemia are precipitating factors. Uh, the left atrium doesn't look normal, so there is uh, left atrium remodeling and dysfunction in place, but again, we don't know exactly what the mechanism of it is. It's overloaded, is it fibrosis, is it something else? Uh, and uh, the total loss of left atrial function due to development of atrial fibrillation is another important factor. Uh, we know that uh, more than 10% of all people over the age of 80 develop atrial fibrillation, so it's clearly another age-related problem. So, yeah, if you, if you go on MedLine and search for diastolic heart failure, you'll probably see, I don't know, five to 10,000 publications in diastolic heart failure. But most of them are repeating the same thing, that it's probably due to increased stiffness and so on and so on. But we don't really know, to be honest. So it uh, looks a little bit like um, this old tale of the emperor's new clothes. So we repeat the same cliches, but maybe we don't know really anything about diastolic heart failure. Maybe we just need a little brave boy, like here, who is going to say that the emperor actually has no clothes on, so we don't know. Okay, and that's another piece of bad news. We know now that we have, we have quite, quite a, a, a lot of evidence about a number of therapies and therapeutic strategies that work in systolic heart failure. It's ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor antagonists, beta blockers, Allosterone antagonists, and we have a new device-based strategy, cardiac synchronization, that works very well. So all these strategies, they improve, uh, they improve symptoms, and most importantly, they make patients live longer. But for diastolic heart failure, there are none. We, we don't know. There are no proven effective uh, therapies for diastolic heart failure. So just to summarize, uh, it has high prevalence, uh, which is growing. In, in a linear fashion with increasing age. And uh, if, if we accept that uh, the prognosis in diastolic heart failure is the same, only marginally better than in systolic heart failure, it is a major killer of older patients in the, in the West. Uh, we don't really know what the mechanism causing this condition is, and it's not easy to diagnose, and we don't know how to treat it. <coughs>